man, do we have a fun one today. In fact, uh, this was one of, the, as far as like an engineering and putting together standpoint, this is one of the harder projects I think I've ever put together. There's so many different things. Uh, what an infinity cube is, it's, it's a line that is continuous around a cube, so it's never broken. So basically you have 18 right angle joints, whether they're counterclockwise or clockwise, uh, and it goes around this entire cube. When I pitched this idea to a few of my friends, they said it was impossible in wood. I've seen these out of metal before. I don't think it's ever been done out of wood. And it was a challenge. There was a lot of engineering problems that we had to solve during this, uh, including ways to really focus on getting it to come together as a cube and stability and those kind of things. But it came out really, really cool and I'm really happy with the results. So. Uh, to get started, uh, we need to mill up some square lumber. There's, uh, by the way, there's gonna be some free, I wouldn't call them plans, but some layout and cut lists on my website will be free, go check it out. Uh, we're gonna start by milling up some square stock and cutting it to 17 and a half inches, 12 pieces, and six pieces at 15 and a half inches. So let's get into milling some lumber. a lot of milling but now we're getting into the really fun stuff and also the very confusing stuff to do this I actually 3d printed a model to sort of help me visualize how this is going to work and I originally had planned to do box joints which is why we made the box joint jig last week but we're gonna go with bridal joints um, actually a good friend of mine Jay Bates suggested that I was talking to him what kind of joinery I should do so I created a really cool jig that I think makes this joinery really easy. You don't have to reset your router. It's really neat. So let me bring you in and show you how we get this done. Okay, so here's our 3D printed model and you can see uh, I've labeled the top and then I put two lines for a bridal joint that has this and one line for a bridal joint that just has the centerpiece. Um, and in this infinity cube, there's 12 long pieces and six short pieces. Now the 12 long pieces, the joinery is in line with each other. So they're going to be the same direction. Whereas with the shorter pieces, each set of joinery is gonna be turned 90 degrees. So now we have three short pieces that are turned counterclockwise and three that are turned clockwise. So I have here a cut list and this is from the free set of, I don't know if I'd call them plans, but I've got diagrams and stuff to help you do this along with a cut list. There's also a really great website that I found that I got these dimensions from. You can input what you want and it comes out with an infinity cube. I forget the guy's name, but I will link it down below in the pinned comment along with a link to the free plans. So our joint is just gonna go like this. And here is where it gets really cool. Let me show you how I figured out how to cut this really easily. So our piece is an inch and a half by an inch and a half. And this is half inch MDF. Now there's some slight variations like MDF is a little bit proud of half an inch by like 0.04 and that can add up. But it's pretty darn close and I figured out that if I used a half inch bit and half inch MDF to get our inch and a half, we've got three pieces. This equals our inch and a half, which equals our piece. This is our sort of support piece. So if I put the bit exactly half an inch away from this piece, then it is directly in the middle. Then I can take a shim, a half inch shim, and we can cut our center piece like this and then take it away and we can cut the groove through the middle for the bridle joint. Now, when you're doing joinery, you need a little bit of play so that you can get it together without it being too tight and glue. So I took, uh, again, my buddy Jay Bates has some really thick stickers. So I used one row of stickers which offset it just enough so that the joint itself fits nice and snug but with enough room to get some glue in there and apply some clamping pressure. Um, I also had this really cool clamp. I think it's from Armor. Uh, there's tons of these type of clamps but it just holds the piece in there. Uh, but you could easily do this with just any F style or squeeze clamp. You could just hold it here and here. Um, but this is just gonna make it a little faster. All right, so 
let's go ahead and cut our joinery. I figured out with my 3D model here that basically every single piece is gonna have one tongue and one groove. Um, and then for our short pieces, we need to do three where uh, the, they're rotated clockwise and three where they're rotated counterclockwise. And honestly, as I say that, I'm realizing that because it's square joinery, I had originally planned to do miters, as you can see here, so I was really worried about the rotation. But now that I'm saying it out loud, I'm realizing that clockwise and counterclockwise doesn't matter. They just are twisted 90 degrees, and because it's square joinery, it doesn't matter. But it's enough talking. Let's get into cutting some joinery. Okay, so we got the joinery done. I, you know, I made all those router videos where I said, oh, clear out some waste before you do it. And honestly, you could, you, depending on your router table or your router that you're using, clear out some of that waste before you cut these, make it a little bit easier. But all in all, pretty simple, went pretty easy. The only thing that happened was at one point my router bit dropped a little bit, so my collet was a little loose. So I went back and tightened that and then went through and checked all the joints. Uh, now we're gonna do the glue up. I tried to mock it up, but there's no way you're putting this whole thing together without glue. It's just not gonna happen. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and put together groups of three, which is two longs and a short. Um, and then once those are all dry tomorrow, we'll be able to put the whole thing together and glue it up. So this is pretty exciting. Let's get into it. Oh, and last thing is I'll end up putting some furniture leveling feet under the outsides. Otherwise they would be free hanging and just supported on these posts. If it was metal, it would probably hold it up, but I'm not even gonna risk it. We finished our first glue up, we're gonna go into our second glue up and you may wanna sand here. Originally, I think before the first glue up, I said I was gonna glue it into pieces of three. I was glad I stopped and thought about that because that would not have worked. So what I did was I did our, my essentially bottom and top. So I did a set of four and then I did a set of two. And those you can't screw up because you can flip them over and then go either way. But what is the remainder is a set of three and you need to do those opposite from each other. So what that means is that a tongue and a groove on the short pieces facing out and a tongue and a groove on the long pieces facing out. And if you do that, it should be pretty easy to get this thing done. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and put this thing together. It may be two glue ups, uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll be able to get it done in one just depending on how square it is and everything like that. So uh, let's get into it. All right, it's a new day, we got a new haircut and we are ready to get this thing wrapped up. Our glue up is done. One of the things I was super concerned about when we were gluing this up that all these joints were perfectly 90 and they all are. One thing that I didn't really think about is how necessary it was for them to be ultra flat. I wish I had maybe clamped them down on a flat surface as well as clamping them together. But a good woodworker doesn't not make mistakes, they know how to fix them. So I have a solution which is I have some cast acrylic here uh, in half inch, which should be rigid enough. If not, we'll beef it up to the one inch, but I don't think we'll need to. Um, and we're gonna cut some blocks that go, that span corners and will help level things out. I also have some furniture feet levelers, which I, I kind of expected this thing even before we built it to get a little wonky and I was planning on leveling it with the feet leveler. So we'll use a combination of those two things to get this thing nice and square so we can route in a groove for our tempered glass. Um, which has a really cool bevel on the edge that I'm gonna try and get it to stick up. It's really small, but we'll see what we can do. Quick little pro tip, when you cut acrylic, you get a frosted edge like that. Uh, you can sand it up to like 400, maybe even 800, and then just hit it with a blowtorch uh, like you do with epoxy, and that tends to get it really clear. Then you can buff it on a buffing wheel if you want. If not, no big deal. So let's uh, get this thing dialed in. We'll do a little sanding and try and get it square. Do the glass get it finished up and see what this thing looks like.
that came out cool. And honestly, that acrylic really helped with the strength of it. It's still not like, I wouldn't sit on it for sure, but this is a great decorative piece to have in your house. And honestly, like I said in the intro, I didn't even know if this was possible. And there were a couple of times during this project that I honestly didn't know if we were gonna be able to get it done, but it's just super cool. 18 joints that all go in a line and it, it really, it just came out neat. Uh, go check out that website. My friend Steven hosts that uh, website. I think it's everything wood and metal. It's really cool. Uh, go get the free plans for my website. That'll be linked down in the description. And if you wanna support the channel, uh, you can pick up a shirt, a dovetail jig, a stop block, or you can join the channel as a member right next to the subscribe button. Don't forget to ring that bell. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe in the shop and have a wonderful day.